The Pandronian High Commander's mocking laughter echoed through the summit hall as he ridiculed humanity's primitive warships and pitiful defenses in front of the assembled alien delegates. But his laughter would turn to ashes in his mouth when he learns the truth too late. That an ancient human vessel of staggering power is hidden away, waiting to be unleashed. Cadet Matthew Morgan struggled to control his anger as he watched the arrogant Pandronians openly belittle and insult his people at the intergalactic summit. In a private meeting afterwards, the sneering High Commander Izar declared that mighty Pandronia could conquer Earth in mere days if they wished. He dismissed humans as a weak, inferior species that did not belong on the galactic stage. The ambassadors were outraged, but held their tongues, not wishing to provoke hostilities. The Pandronians' insults quickly went viral back on Earth. The people were furious. Riots erupted in the streets as angry mobs demanded action against alien aggression. World leaders scrambled to respond to the crisis as protests threatened to spiral out of control. Pundits openly discussed capitulation, arguing that Earth's defenses were no match for the fearsome Pandronian war machine. In the press, doomsayers grimly predicted the imminent fall of humanity and the end of their way of life. Behind closed doors, Matthew confided in his mentor, the battle-scarred Admiral Donovan. There were whispers of a top-secret project, of a lost superweapon that could defeat any foe. Donovan revealed that the rumors were true, that hidden away for centuries was an unimaginably advanced and powerful human warship called the Retribution, built with technology from a long-vanished alien civilization. If necessary, the Retribution could be deployed against Pandronia taking the fight to the enemy and defending humanity's honor. Donovan swore Matthew to absolute secrecy about the Black Project, hinting that he may soon play a role in the coming storm. But time was already running out. In deep space, a Pandronian warfleet commanded by the ruthless Admiral Zad, Izar's strategic protege, was drilling around the clock, preparing invasion plans for a surprise offensive that would bring Earth to its knees. Zad envisioned the blue-green gem of humanity's homeworld as the newest jewel in the Pandronian Empire, its resources and people subjugated as fuel for their relentless expansion. He pictured the human species toiling as slaves in their factories and fields, their culture and achievements reduced to ashes. Little did he know Earth still had one last trick to play. From the depths of a hidden bunker, a single message crackled across coded channels to a select few in the know. It's time to wake the retribution. The stage was set for a final confrontation that would determine the fate of humanity, if Admiral Donovan's gambit pays off. Time was of the essence. Matthew received an encrypted message on his personal comm unit instructing him to report to a set of coordinates in the middle of nowhere. He knew it had to be about the retribution project. After a series of security checkpoints and identity verifications that would have impressed even the most paranoid conspiracy theorist, Matthew found himself in a dimly lit underground briefing room. Admiral Donovan stood at the front, his face grim. Matthew took a seat, noticing a few other men and women already present. He recognized some of them, the best pilots, engineers, and strategists Earth had to offer. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, Donovan began without preamble. As some of you may have heard, we have a secret weapon called the Retribution, an ancient warship of immense power hidden away centuries ago. Murmurs rippled through the room. Donovan stepped forward, his eyes hard. According to legend, the Retribution lies dormant in a cloaked hangar on Earth's moon, waiting for our darkest hour, which is upon us now. He looked at each person in turn. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to locate the retribution and bring it online before the Pandronians invade. Sir, how do we even begin to operate technology that ancient? One of the engineers asked. Donovan tapped a few keys and a holographic display of alien hieroglyphs appeared. You'll be studying these texts and learning the systems. It won't be easy, but I have faith in your abilities. Over the next days and weeks, Matthew and the team pored over the alien scripts and technical readouts. They ran endless simulations, pushing themselves to exhaustion. Slowly but surely, they began to understand the intricate workings of the retribution. 
Matthew found himself taking point in many of the exercises, his instincts for the alien tech bordering on uncanny. Even Donovan seemed impressed, giving him an approving nod after a particularly grueling sim run. But their training was soon interrupted by dire news. A Pandronian warship had brazenly attacked and destroyed an Earth freighter in neutral space. Footage of the burning wreckage and Pandronian war cruiser played on every news feed. The people of Earth were incensed, demanding retribution for the unprovoked act of war. In an emergency meeting, Earth's leaders made the grim decision to mobilize the conventional fleet as a distraction while greenlighting Matthew's team to launch their covert mission to the moon. They were out of time. Matthew pulled on his pressure suit with shaking hands, his breath loud in the confines of his helmet. This was really happening. The shuttle flight was like a blur, the advanced stealth systems cloaking their approach. As they touched down on the barren lunar landscape near the designated coordinates, Matthew felt a chill run down his spine that had nothing to do with the cold seeping through his suit. Everything rested on their shoulders now. The team fanned out, scanners sweeping for any anomaly. Matthew frowned at his readouts, then blinked. There, in the distance, an unusual formation of rocks, too geometric to be natural. He signaled the others, and they converged on the site. Up close, it was clear the rocks had been deliberately arranged. With mounting excitement, they cleared away the boulders to reveal a disguised airlock, ancient alien markings surrounding the portal. They had found it, the hidden entrance. Exchanging looks of trepidation and willpower, Matthew cycled the lock and led the team down into the bowels of the moon. Emergency lights flickered on, bathing the long dormant chambers in an eerie glow. They were in a race against time now. Donovan's last transmission had confirmed Pandronian ships were already on a burn for Earth, far ahead of schedule. Matthew knew every second counted as they plunged deeper into the secret lair, seeking the activation center of the retribution before it was too late. The air was stale, their footsteps ringing on metal flooring untouched for centuries. Ancient screens and consoles blinked to life at their presence, alien scripts scrolling across the displays, a soft hum built around them, the stirring of long slumbering power plants. Matthew halted at a set of massive blast doors, a strange certainty building in his gut. Beyond those barriers lay the retribution itself. He could feel it. He turned to his team, seeing the same realization reflected in their eyes. This was it the pivotal moment. Together, they heaved open the doors, a rush of air escaping as the hermetic seals released. Matthew stepped forward into a cavernous hangar and found himself face to face with the most breathtaking and intimidating sight he had ever laid eyes on. He had thought seeing it in the texts was one thing, but standing here now in its presence, the retribution was real and it was magnificent. Matthew's heart raced as he stepped into the cavernous hangar. The retribution loomed before them, its hull gleaming with an otherworldly sheen. It dwarfed anything in Earth's fleet, stretching farther than his eyes could see in the dim light. Holy shit, one of the engineers breathed. It's real. As they approached the vessel, panels lit up along its surface, a hatch irised open with a hiss of ancient hydraulics. Matthew felt a pull, an inexplicable urge to board. Inside, Dormant consoles flickered to life at their touch. Matthew's fingers danced across alien symbols, muscle memory kicking in for knowledge he'd never learned. The ship hummed around them, awakening. How are you doing that? asked Sarah, their chief engineer. Matthew shook his head. I don't know. It just feels... right. A priority transmission crackled through their comms. Admiral Donovan's voice was grim. Matthews, the Pandronians have begun their assault. Earth's defenses are faltering. We need that ship now. Understood, sir, Matthew replied, his mind racing. He turned to his team. We need to get this bird in the air. Sarah, work on bringing the main engines online. Carlos, see if you can get weapon systems functional. As his crew scrambled to their tasks, Matthew studied the navigational displays. An idea formed. We'll use the moon's gravity to slingshot us into Earth orbit. It'll give us the speed we need and catch the Pandronians off guard. 
the Retribution's engines roared to life, vibrating through the lunar rock. Matthew gripped the controls, feeling the raw power at his fingertips. With a thought, the ship surged forward, bursting through layers of moon dust and stone. They erupted from the lunar surface in a plume of debris, arcing towards Earth. The blue-green orb of humanity's homeworld filled their viewscreen, marred by flashes of weapons fire. On the Pandronian flagship, Admiral Zad gaped at the massive ship that had appeared from nowhere. Impossible, he growled. All ships, focus fire on that vessel. Matthew opened a channel to the Pandronian fleet. This is Acting Captain Matthew Morgan of the Earth Ship Retribution. Cease your attack and withdraw immediately. Zad's laughter boomed through the comm. You expect us to flee from one ship, pathetic humans? Matthew's face hardened. Have it your way. He targeted a nearby Pandronian destroyer, unleashing a precise beam of energy that sliced through its hull like butter. The ship went dark, drifting powerless. Panic spread through the Pandronian ranks. Some ships turned tail and fled while others regrouped for a counterattack. Sir, Carlos called out, I've found some kind of shielding system. Should I activate it? Do it, Matthew ordered. A shimmer enveloped the retribution, extending outward to encompass the earth. Pandronian weapons splashed harmlessly against the barrier. Matthew pressed their advantage, targeting Pandronian ships with surgical strikes that disabled rather than destroyed. This isn't about vengeance, he told his crew. We're showing them we can't be pushed around. As the battle raged, Admiral Zad grew desperate. All ships ramming speed, we'll take that abomination down with us. Matthew saw the incoming wall of ships and knew he had no choice. He poured every ounce of the Retribution's power into its main gun. A blinding lance of energy lashed out, vaporizing Zad's flagship in an instant. The remaining Pandronian vessels scattered, jumping to hyperspace in a panic. Earth was saved, but the cost was visible in the field of debris now orbiting the planet. As they guided the retribution back towards Earth, Matthew's calm crackled. It was Admiral Donovan. Outstanding work, son, but I'm afraid this is just the beginning. The galaxy will be watching us now. Matthew nodded grimly, knowing the challenges that lay ahead. Humanity had proven itself a force to be reckoned with, but at what cost? And what new threats might emerge to test them? Only time would tell. Matthew's heart pounded as he stepped off the retribution onto Earth's soil. Crowds cheered, waving flags and banners. Morgan! Morgan! They chanted. He forced a smile, uncomfortable with the attention. Admiral Donovan greeted him with a firm handshake. Well done, son. You've made history. The next weeks passed in a blur of debriefings and ceremonies. Matthew sat through countless meetings as Earth's leaders debated their newfound power. We should claim the Orion Arm as human territory, one general proclaimed, pounding his fist on the table. The retribution gives us the advantage. We'd be fools not to use it, another agreed. Matthew shifted uneasily. This wasn't what he'd fought for. Late one night, Donovan pulled him aside. We've intercepted chatter. Multiple alien factions are gunning for the retribution. We need to move it. Now. Within hours, Matthew and his core team were aboard the ancient warship, slipping away from Earth under cover of darkness. They set up in a hidden station orbiting a barren moon, light years from any mapped system. All right, people, let's see what this baby can really do, Matthew said clapping his hands together. Days blurred as they pored over alien tech. Sarah worked tirelessly mapping circuitry. Carlos ran combat simulations. Matthew felt a constant pull towards a particular console. Holy shit, Sarah breathed one day. Matt, come look at this. She pulled up schematics of a device unlike anything they'd seen. It's some kind of matter transmitter. In theory... It could teleport the entire ship across galaxies. Matthew's eyes widened. Can we use it? Sarah shook her head. The energy requirements are astronomical. And the calculations. One wrong digit and we'd materialize inside a star. Meanwhile, on the Pandronian homeworld, Admiral Zad stood before the tribunal.
His scales were dull, his posture defeated. The humans wield a weapon of unimaginable power, he snarled. It must be destroyed before they turn it on us all. Murmurs rippled through the assembly. Zad's eyes glinted. They were buying it. Hours later, he strode from the chamber, pardon in hand and a new mission burning in his mind. He would find the retribution. And this time, he would not fail. Zad's new ship cut through space, its experimental warp drive pushing the limits of Pandronian tech. His hand-picked team stood ready, the best of the best. On the station, Matthew jolted awake. Something felt wrong. He rushed to the sensor array, heart sinking at the faint signature on the edge of their range. We've been made, he breathed. Battle stations. But they were too late. Pandronian soldiers materialized throughout the station, weapons blazing. Matthew and his team fell back, fighting a desperate retreat to the retribution. They sealed the ship's bulkhead, breath coming in ragged gasps, but they could hear the Pandronians cutting through. We're out of options, Matthew said. He turned to Sarah. The transmitter. It's our only shot. Sarah's eyes went wide. Matt, we haven't tested it. The calculations... Do it, Matthew ordered. Sarah's fingers flew across the console. The ship hummed to life around them, energy building to impossible levels. The bulkhead burst open. Zad himself stepped through, weapon raised triumphantly. Matthew slammed his hand down on the activation panel. Reality twisted. The universe seemed to turn inside out, and in a flash of searing light, the retribution vanished. Zad howled in fury, firing uselessly at empty space. Once again, his prize had slipped through his fingers. But where had the retribution gone? And would Matthew and his crew survive the journey? The retribution lurched violently as it emerged from the matter transmitter. Matthew's stomach churned, his vision blurring as reality reasserted itself. Alarms blared across the bridge, red warning lights bathing the crew in an ominous glow. Status report, Matthew barked, fighting down a wave of nausea. Sarah's fingers flew across her console. Main power at 30%, weapons offline, life support stable, but auxiliary systems are failing. Matthew gritted his teeth. They'd escaped Zad, but at what cost? He moved to the navigation station, scanning the unfamiliar star patterns. Where the hell are we? Carlos shook his head. Unknown, sir. No matches in our database. A thunderous boom rocked the ship. Matthew stumbled, catching himself on a nearby railing. What now? Massive energy spike, Sarah shouted. Something's coming out of warp. Matthew's jaw dropped as a colossal vessel materialized before them. It dwarfed the retribution, jam-packed with weapon emplacements that put Earth's most advanced battleships to shame. Before Matthew could issue orders, the viewscreen flickered to life. A hulking alien figure filled the display, its features a nightmarish blend of insectoid and reptilian. When it spoke, the Universal Translator struggled to keep up. I am Graklar the Conqueror. Your pitiful vessel now belongs to me. Surrender or be destroyed. Matthew's mind raced. With systems crippled, they stood no chance against this behemoth. He opened his mouth to refuse, to go down fighting. But then he saw the fear in his crew's eyes. These people had followed him across the galaxy, endured untold hardships. He couldn't condemn them to death. We, we surrender, Matthew choked out. Grackler's mandibles clicked in satisfaction. A wise choice, human. The air shimmered as teleportation beams deposited heavily armed alien soldiers onto the bridge. Matthew raised his hands, his crew following suit. As rough hands seized him, Matthew caught one last glimpse of the retribution's controls. Then everything went black. Matthew awoke with a splitting headache. He blinked, trying to focus in the dim light. As his vision cleared, his breath caught in his throat. They were in an immense chamber, easily the size of a football stadium. But it was what lined the walls that truly chilled him. Artifacts and trophies stretched as far as the eye could see, remnants of a thousand conquered worlds. Welcome to my collection, humans. Matthew turned to see Groklar looming over them, flanked by guards. 
the alien warlord's eyes gleamed with cruel intelligence. Your ship is quite the prize, Grocklar continued. I've sought it for years. Now you will tell me its secrets. Matthew stood tall despite his bonds. We'll tell you nothing. Grocklar's laugh was like grinding stone. Oh, but you will, Kurvath. A smaller alien stepped forward, tools glinting on its belt. Matthew's skin crawled at the sight. My chief interrogator has broken far stronger minds than yours, Grockler boasted. You will beg to share your knowledge before the end. As Kurvath approached, Matthew locked eyes with his crew. Their faces were grim, but resolute. Whatever horrors lay ahead, they would face them together. Days blurred into weeks. Matthew lost track of time, his world narrowing to endless cycles of pain and brief respites. One by one, he watched his crew fall. Some broke under torture. Others... Matthew squeezed his eyes shut, trying to block out the memories. Now he knelt alone before Kravath, his body a mass of bruises and half-healed wounds. The interrogator loomed over him, brandishing a cruel device. Still silent, human? Perhaps the death of another crew member will loosen your tongue. Matthew's head snapped up. He saw Carlos, battered but alive, dragged before him. Kurvath raised a weapon. No, Matthew croaked. He gathered his remaining strength and spat, a glob of blood and saliva striking Kurvath's face. The alien's eyes blazed with fury. It raised the weapon, aiming at Matthew's heart. A deafening explosion rocked the chamber. Alarms blared as the deck plates shuddered beneath them. Kurvath whirled, barking orders into a communicator. In that moment of distraction, Matthew acted. He threw himself forward, smashing his head into Kravath's midsection. The alien stumbled, its weapon clattering to the floor. Matthew's bound hands scrabbled for the device, fingers closing around cool metal. Another explosion. Sparks rained down as power fluctuated. In the chaos, Matthew brought the weapon up and fired. Kravath fell, smoke rising from a hole in its chest. Matthew struggled to his feet, freeing Carlos. We have to move. They fought their way through panicked aliens, stealing weapons where they could. Matthew's body screamed in protest, but adrenaline carried him forward. They had to reach the retribution. As they neared the docking bay, a familiar figure blocked their path. Admiral Zad, flanked by Pandronian soldiers. You, Matthew snarled. Zad's scales rippled in agitation. This isn't over, human! They charged at each other, colliding in a fury of fists and claws. Matthew felt ribs crack as Zad landed a powerful blow, but he pressed on. They grappled across the bridge, alarms still blaring around them. Matthew's fingers brushed a control panel. Suddenly, his mind exploded with information. The retribution systems flooded his consciousness, somehow unlocked by the ordeal he'd endured. With a thought, he activated the ship's defenses. Energy crackled, hurling Zad back. Matthew stood, power thrumming through him. It's over, Zad, he said. The Pandronian's eyes widened in fear. Outside, Graklar's forces closed in. Matthew reached out with his mind, feeling the fabric of space-time bend to his will. A swirling vortex of energy formed, growing rapidly. What are you doing? Zad screamed. Matthew said nothing as the wormhole expanded swallowing Grocklar's flagship and the Pandronian vessels. In seconds, they were gone, leaving only empty space behind. Exhausted, Matthew slumped in the captain's chair. The retribution hummed around him, awaiting his command. He input coordinates, feeling the ship's systems respond to his thoughts. As they jumped to a safe location, Matthew surveyed the damage. He was alone, the last of his crew. And now, with the secret of the retribution revealed, every power in the galaxy would be hunting them. He closed his eyes, allowing himself a moment of grief. Then, straightening his shoulders, Matthew began to plan. Earth needed him, and he would not fail again. Matthew's eyes snapped open, his body aching from the impact. The retribution's twisted hull groaned around him, emergency lights flickering weakly. He pulled himself to his feet, stumbling through the wreckage of what was once the bridge. Status report, he croaked, 
his mental link with the ship's systems responding sluggishly. Damage readouts flashed across his mind's eye. Life support. Critical. Weapons. Offline. Engines. Beyond repair. The ancient warship that had carried him across galaxies now lay broken on the lunar surface. Matthew dragged himself to a viewscreen, wiping away dust and debris. Earth hung in the black void, a blue marble marred by flashes of light. The battle raged on. He activated the long-range comm system, praying it still functioned. This is Matthew Morgan of the Retribution, Earth Fleet. Do you copy? Static crackled, then a familiar voice broke through. Matt, thank God you're alive. We received your warning, but... Admiral Donovan's voice trailed off. How bad is it? Matthew asked, dreading the answer. We're getting slaughtered out here. The Pandronians, are, there's just too many of them. Matthew's fists clenched. He'd come so far, suffered so much. He couldn't let it end like this. I'm transmitting everything I found in the Pandronian files, he said, fingers flying across a battered console. There has to be something we can use. As the data streamed out, Matthew scanned the hangar. Pieces of Pandronian tech littered the floor, remnants of the raiders he'd fought off. An idea sparked in his mind. Donovan, I need time, he said. Keep them busy as long as you can. Without waiting for a response, Matthew got to work. He cobbled together salvaged parts, repurposing alien tech with a frantic energy. Hours blurred as he pushed his body to its limits, fueled by desperation and the knowledge that Earth's fate hung in the balance. Finally, he stood back, surveying his handiwork. A crude transmitter array, built from the guts of the retribution and scavenged Pandronian components. It wasn't pretty, but it just might work. Matthew closed his eyes, focusing his thoughts. The mental link that had once controlled the retribution now connected him to this jury-rigged monstrosity. He felt the power building, arcing through salvaged circuits. Come on, he muttered, just a little more. The array hummed to life, energy crackling across its surface. Matthew gritted his teeth, pushing it to its limits. He had one shot at this. Suddenly, the calm crackled. Matt, we can't hold them back any longer. They're breaking through our last line of... Donovan's words cut off as Matthew unleashed everything he had. A pulse of energy erupted from the lunar surface, invisible to the naked eye, but devastatingly potent. It washed over the Pandronian fleet, frying their systems in an instant. Matthew collapsed, his body pushed beyond its limits. Through blurring vision, he watched as the Pandronian ships drifted lifelessly their invasion halted in its tracks. He allowed himself a small smile before darkness claimed him. Earth was safe for now, but the war was not nearly finished. Matthew's eyes snapped open, the lunar dust coating his battered body. He pushed himself up, surveying the wreckage of the retribution scattered across the desolate landscape. Earth hung in the void above, flashes of light punctuating its atmosphere as the Pandronian invasion force closed in. He stumbled to a twisted console, fingers dancing across shattered controls. Sparks flew as he rerouted power, cobbling together a makeshift transmitter from the ship's remnants. The device hummed to life, ready to broadcast across all frequencies. Matthew took a deep breath, steeling himself. This is Matthew Morgan, pilot of the Retribution, he began, his voice echoing across the airwaves. Supreme Commander Vazric, I challenge you to single combat. If I win, your forces withdraw from Earth's solar system immediately. Silence stretched for agonizing minutes. Then, a harsh laugh crackled through the calm. You dare challenge me, human? Vazric's voice dripped with disdain. Your insolence knows no bounds. Matthew stood tall despite the pain racking his body. Afraid to face me, Vazric? After what the retribution did to your fleet, I'd understand your cowardice. The calm went dead. Matthew waited, tension building in his chest. Suddenly, the air shimmered around him. He felt a strange pulling sensation, then found himself aboard the Pandronian flagship. Vazric loomed before him, scales gleaming in the harsh light. The alien's eyes narrowed as he inspected Matthew. Where are your weapons, human? Do you plan to fight me with your bare hands? 
Matthew's lips curled into a grim smile. I need no weapons, Vazric. The retribution has given me power beyond your comprehension. Vazric lunged forward, claws slashing through the air. Matthew didn't move a muscle. Instead, an invisible force caught the alien's arm, wrenching it backward. Vazric stumbled, eyes wide with shock. Impossible, he hissed. Matthew raised his hand, focusing his mind. Vazric lifted off the ground, clawing at his throat as an unseen pressure constricted around him. With a flick of Matthew's wrist, the alien commander slammed into the far wall. Vazric struggled to his feet, activating a device on his wrist. Alarms blared as doors slid open, revealing squads of Pandronian assassins. They charged forward, weapons raised. Matthew sensed the danger through his link with the retribution. He closed his eyes, concentrating. A shimmering barrier sprang into existence around him. The assassin's energy bolt struck the field, disintegrating on contact. With a thought, Matthew expanded the barrier. It rippled outward, engulfing the attacking Pandronians. Their screams cut off abruptly as they vanished, reduced to their component atoms. Vazric cowered in the corner, all pretense of superiority gone. Please, he begged, spare me. I'll call off the invasion. Just let me live. Matthew stared at the alien, remembering the cruelty he'd witnessed. The torture. The destruction. He shook his head slowly. Reaching out with his mind, Matthew felt the scattered pieces of the retribution respond. They rose from the lunar surface, streaking through space toward the Pandronian ship. The bulkheads groaned as the debris tore through, swirling around Vazric in a vortex of destruction. The alien screams echoed through the ship as the Retribution's fragments shredded his physical form. In moments, only a cloud of atoms remained. Matthew closed his eyes, scattering Vazric's essence across the cosmos with a mere thought. He turned his attention to the Pandronian fleet. Tapping into the full might of the Retribution, Matthew unleashed a surge of cosmic energy. Space itself seemed to tear open, a yawning chasm of interdimensional void. The Pandronian ships, caught in its pull, vanished one by one into the rift. As quickly as it began, it was over. Matthew stood alone on the bridge of the alien flagship, the vast Pandronian armada erased from existence. He felt the weight of his newfound power, the responsibility it carried. Earth was safe, but at what cost? Matthew knew he could never return to his old life. He was something else now, something beyond human. As celebrations erupted across his home planet, Matthew made his decision. He focused his will, reconstructing a shard of the retribution around him. As the ship took form, Matthew set his sights on the stars. The Pandronian homeworld awaited, along with countless subjugated races crying out for freedom. His journey was not nearly finished. Matthew's consciousness expanded beyond the confines of his human form, stretching across the vastness of space. The Retribution's power surged through him, reshaping his very essence. He focused his will, coalescing into a shimmering energy construct aboard a fragment of the ancient warship. With a thought, he initiated the jump to Pandran Prime. Space itself bent around him, stars blurring into streaks of light. In an instant, the Pandronian homeworld loomed before him, a world of harsh angles and gleaming metal its surface scarred by centuries of industry and warfare. Planetary defenses flared to life, a web of energy beams and missile barrages. Matthew didn't even bother to dodge. The attacks passed through his incorporeal form, dissipating harmlessly. He descended toward the heart of the Pandronian Empire, the Imperial Citadel. The massive structure pierced the sky, its obsidian spires adorned with the trophies of conquered worlds. Matthew phased through its walls, materializing in the opulent throne room. Hundreds of Pandronian warriors and nobles turned to face him, their scaled faces contorting in shock and terror. Supreme Commander Graz, resplendent in ornate battle armor, stood frozen mid-speech. His reptilian eyes narrowed as he barked an order, Guards, destroy this intruder. Elite Pandronian soldiers charged forward, energy weapons blazing. Matthew raised a hand almost lazily. 
The air shimmered, and where living warriors had stood moments before, gleaming crystal statues now adorned the chamber. Graz's voice shook as he demanded, Who are you? What is the meaning of this attack? Matthew's eyes glowed with cosmic fire as he spoke. I am Matthew Morgan, champion of Earth. I've come to end your reign of terror and free the worlds you've enslaved. The Pandronian leader's fear gave way to arrogance. He sneered, You may have bested Vazric, human, but that was mere chance. The might of the Pandronian Empire will crush you. Graz pressed a button on his armored gauntlet. A massive door at the far end of the throne room slid open with a thunderous groan. From the shadows emerged a nightmarish creature, part flesh, part machine. Cybernetic implants pulsed along its muscled hide, razor-sharp claws leaving gouges in the metal floor. Behold the apex of Pandronian bioengineering, Graz crowed. Tear him apart. The monstrous war beast lunged at Matthew, jaws gaping wide enough to swallow a man whole. Time seemed to slow as Matthew exerted his will. The creature froze in midair, suspended by invisible forces. With a flick of his wrist, Matthew redirected its momentum. The beast crashed into Graz's ornate throne, reducing it to rubble. Pandronian nobles scattered, their screams echoing through the chamber. Graz stumbled backward, his composure shattered. Wait, the Supreme Commander pleaded. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. The riches of a thousand worlds could be yours. Join us and... Matthew cut him off, his voice cold. I've seen the results of your arrangements. No more. Graz's face contorted with rage. Then you leave me no choice. He thumped his hand down on a hidden panel in his armor. Alarms blared throughout the citadel. A low rumble shook the floor as something massive activated deep beneath them. Matthew's enhanced senses detected a surge of unimaginable power. Graz laughed maniacally. If I can't have this world, no one will. Watch as your Grand Crusade ends in ashes. A beam of searing energy erupted from the Citadel's peak, lancing toward Pandran Prime's sun. Matthew's mind raced, grasping the full scope of the threat. The Pandronians meant to snuff out their own star, dooming not just their world, but their entire system. There was no time for hesitation. Matthew pushed his consciousness to its limits, tapping into the underlying fabric of reality itself. He felt the dance of subatomic particles, the ebb and flow of cosmic forces. With supreme effort, he reached out and twisted. A single quark shifted its position by an infinitesimal amount. The change rippled outward, cascading through the doomsday weapon systems. The energy beam destabilized, collapsing back in on itself. A blinding flash engulfed the citadel. When it faded, Matthew stood alone in a smoking crater. Of Graz and his followers, nothing remained but drifting ash. As the dust settled, shimmering forms began to coalesce around Matthew. Ethereal representations of countless alien races, each one a victim of Pandronian oppression. They gazed at him with a mixture of awe and hope. Matthew looked out over the scarred landscape of Pandran Prime the weight of responsibility settling on his shoulders. The real work was just beginning. Beginning. Matthew stood atop the highest spire of the newly constructed capital on Pandran Prime, surveying the sprawling cityscape below. The once barren world now teemed with life as representatives from dozens of alien species worked together to build a new future. He closed his eyes, reaching out with his expanded consciousness to feel the ebb and flow of life across the planet. Countless minds buzzed with activity, each one a unique tapestry of thoughts and emotions. Matthew focused his will, reshaping matter at the atomic level to accelerate the reconstruction efforts. As the sun set, casting long shadows across the gleaming buildings, Matthew descended to the Grand Council Chamber. Alien dignitaries from every liberated world filled the room, their forms as varied as the stars themselves. Some floated on gossamer wings, Others lumbered on multiple legs, while still others existed as shimmering energy constructs. Esteemed members of the Council, Matthew began, his voice resonating with otherworldly power. We gather here to forge a new path for our united peoples. 
a reptilian elder from the Saurian Confederation hissed. And who are you to decide our fate, human? Your kind has never known the yoke of Pandronian oppression. Matthew met the alien's gaze, unflinching. I may not have lived your experiences, but I have seen them. The retribution has shown me the suffering of every world, every individual. We must move beyond the past if we are to survive. Murmurs of discontent rippled through the chamber. A crystalline being pulsed with agitation as it spoke. Pretty words, but how can we trust each other after centuries of being pitted against one another? Before Matthew could respond, alarms blared throughout the city. Holographic displays flickered to life, showing scenes of chaos erupting across multiple worlds. Matthew's mind raced as he processed the incoming data. Dracala, he growled, recognizing the telltale signs of Pandronian terror attacks. For months, Matthew worked tirelessly to track down the insurgent cells. He projected his consciousness across vast distances, sifting through the thoughts of billions to root out the hidden operatives. Each victory felt hollow as another attack sprang up elsewhere. Finally, deep in the void between stars, Matthew sensed a flicker of familiar malevolence. He materialized on an asteroid base, leading a strike team of elite warriors drawn from every allied species. They fought their way through twisting corridors, disabling traps and overcoming fanatical defenders. At last, they breached the command center where Dracala waited, her scales glinting in the harsh light. It ends here, Matthew declared, energy crackling around his form. Dracala sneered, revealing rows of razor-sharp teeth. You're right about that, human. She slammed her hand down on a control panel. Time seemed to slow as Matthew's enhanced senses detected the surge of antimatter. In that moment, he made a choice that would forever alter the course of history. Abandoning his physical form, Matthew's consciousness surged forward. He invaded Dracala's mind, overwhelming her mental defenses. Within the landscape of her thoughts, he confronted the core of her hatred. Your father's empire is gone, Matthew's voice echoed through her psyche. But you don't have to follow him into oblivion. Dracala's will buckled under the weight of Matthew's cosmic presence. As the antimatter warhead fizzled into harmless particles, she collapsed to the ground, broken but alive. Matthew reformed his body, standing over the defeated Pandronian leader. With a gesture, he encased her in a shimmering field of energy, a prison that would hold her for eternity. Returning to Pandran Prime, Matthew addressed the Council once more. He laid out his vision for a true interstellar alliance, one built on mutual cooperation and shared prosperity. Yet even as he spoke, he sensed the lingering doubts and fears that plagued their minds. Frustration welled up within him. Despite all he had done, despite the power he wielded, he could not force them to embrace unity. Or could he? Matthew withdrew into himself, tapping into the deepest wellsprings of the retribution's power. He focused his will, reaching out to touch every sentient mind across the known galaxy. In that moment of supreme concentration, Matthew reshaped the very fabric of consciousness itself. He wove the ideals of peace and cooperation into the neural pathways of every living being, creating an unbreakable foundation for his new order. As his awareness expanded beyond the physical realm, Matthew felt the old hatreds and prejudices dissolve away. In their place bloomed a shared purpose, a collective drive to work together for the greater good. The transformation rippled outward, touching world after world. Matthew's consciousness diffused across the cosmos, becoming one with the very concept of unity he had created. From this higher state of existence, he watched over the worlds he had reshaped, guiding them toward a brighter future. Matthew's consciousness swelled, a tide of awareness flooding across the cosmos. He touched the minds of countless beings, from the crystalline spires of Pandran Prime to the farthest reaches of the Alliance. Their thoughts flowed through him, a vast river of hopes, fears, and dreams. He reached out, gently nudging neural pathways, reshaping synapses with surgical precision. Conflicts dissolved, replaced by a sense of unity and purpose. Centuries-old hatreds evaporated like morning dew. 
the galaxy hummed with newfound harmony. Yet as Matthew basked in this manufactured utopia, a faint dissonance tickled the edges of his perception. He probed deeper, sifting through layers of collective consciousness. There, a flicker of resistance, barely perceptible against the backdrop of enforced tranquility. Matthew focused his cosmic senses, tracing the disturbance to its source. On a dozen worlds scattered across the Alliance, pockets of minds remained untouched by his psychic imprint. Their thoughts pulsed with an alien rhythm, shielded by techniques he couldn't fathom. He materialized on one such world, a barren rock circling a dying star. Deep beneath the surface in chambers hewn from living stone, robed figures swayed in eerie unison. Their chants echoed through twisting tunnels, a cacophony of alien syllables that set Matthew's teeth on edge. Heretics, he muttered, observing their ritual unseen, clinging to outdated superstitions. A wizened elder raised gnarled hands, his voice cracking as he cried out, The tyrant comes, the one who would bind our very souls. Matthew scoffed, preparing to obliterate this pitiful resistance. Yet something stayed his hand. These cultists, with their primitive rituals, had somehow resisted his cosmic influence. How? He retreated, content to let them wallow in ignorance. Their numbers were few, their impact negligible. The great work of unification would continue unimpeded. Days turned to weeks, weeks to months. Matthew's attention drifted across the vastness of his domain, tending to the needs of trillions. Yet always, that nagging dissonance persisted, growing stronger. Reports filtered in from a dozen worlds. Unrest, demonstrations, populations previously docile now clamored for autonomy. Matthew frowned, focusing his will. He pushed against the growing resistance, only to encounter an unexpected psychic backlash that left him reeling. Panic flared within him. The carefully woven strands of his cosmic web began to unravel. Matthew lashed out, channeling the full might of the retribution. A wave of pure thought crashed across the galaxy, scouring minds clean, reimposing his vision of unity. But the cultists stood firm. Matthew felt his power slide off them like water from oiled glass. Their faith burned too bright, their convictions unshakable. For the first time since his ascension, Matthew knew fear. Rage consumed him. He reached deep into the cosmic abyss, drawing forth energies that predated the universe itself. Reality warped around him as he tore open a rift to the void beyond. Too late, Matthew realized his error. The cultists' arcane energies reacted violently with the primordial forces he had unleashed. Space-time itself began to unravel a cascading wave of entropic destruction consuming everything in its path. Matthew acted on instinct, erecting a barrier of pure will around the affected systems. He poured every ounce of his cosmic power into containing the catastrophe, severing the doomed sectors from the rest of reality. Outside the dimensional membrane, Matthew watched in horror as entire civilizations winked out of existence. The quarantine zones imploded one by one, leaving behind nothing but empty silence. As the last echoes faded, Matthew surveyed what remained of his grand experiment. The surviving worlds of the Alliance continued on, oblivious to the apocalypse that had nearly consumed them all. Yet the certainty that had driven him was gone, replaced by crushing doubt. When whispers of dissent arose once more, Matthew found himself paralyzed. The thought of unleashing his power again of risking another cataclysm, filled him with dread. He retreated from the physical plane, his consciousness dispersing into the primordial void that had birthed the retribution eons ago. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.